Good morning. Glad that you're here. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to be in Ezekiel. We're in the New Living Translation. And we're going to go ahead and open in prayer. Lord, I just thank you for today. And I thank you for um, those that will hear, that will listen, that will share. I just ask that you would touch our hearts today. Help us to be sensitive to those around us. Help us to be your hands and feet today. Help us to love and to see those that are in need of love and to accept the love of others, Lord. And I'm just so grateful for who you are and what you're doing in all of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, and again, thanks for coming. And here we go. So we are going to be in Ezekiel 21 in the New Living Translation. And it was going, but now it's not. Here we go. Of course, it's not going to play now. I just had it set up. And there it goes. And here. Unbelievable. There we go. Today is the 10th day of November. Welcome to the Daily Audio Bible. I'm Brian. It's great to be here with you today. And the web player app looks like this. Totally true. So if you want to join along, to it's free to go on the web player app if you next download the actual forward. app. There's and the adventure that we're on through the Bible this year. And our journey leads us back into the book of Ezekiel and back into the book of Hebrews when we get to the New Testament. So I listen to it on the web player so first, and Ezekiel I follow along in the Bible, the YouVersion app. Through 22, verse 31. A reading from the New Living Translation this week. Then this message came to me from the Lord, Son of Man. Turn and face Jerusalem and prophesy against Israel and her sanctuaries. Tell her, this is what the Lord says. I am your enemy, O Israel, and I am about to unsheath my sword to destroy your people, the righteous and the wicked alike. Yes. I will cut off both the righteous and the wicked. I will draw my sword against everyone in the land from south to north. Everyone in the world will know that I am the Lord. My sword is in my hand, and it will not return to its sheath until its work is finished. Son of man, groan before the people. Groan before them with bitter anguish and a broken heart. When they ask why you are groaning, tell them, I groan because of the terrifying news I have heard. When it comes true, the boldest heart will melt with fear. All strength will disappear. Every spirit will faint. Strong knees will become as weak as water. And the Sovereign Lord says, It is coming. It's on its way. Then the Lord said to me, Son of man, give the people this message from the Lord. A sword, a sword is being sharpened and polished. It is sharpened for terrible slaughter and polished to flash like lightning. Now will you laugh? Those far stronger than you have fallen beneath its power. Yes, the sword is now being sharpened and polished. It is being prepared for the executioner. Son of man, cry out and wail. Pound your thighs in anguish, for that sword will slaughter my people and their leaders. Everyone will die. It will put them all to the test. What chance do they have, says the Sovereign Lord. Son of man, prophesy to them and clap your hands. Then take the sword and brandish it twice, even three times, to symbolize the great massacre. The great massacre facing them on every side. Let their hearts melt with terror. For the sword glitters at every gate. It flashes like lightning and is polished for slaughter. O oh sword, slash to the right and slash to the left. 
Wherever you will, wherever you want, I, too, will clap my hands, and I will satisfy my fury. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, make a map and trace two routes on it for the sword of Babylon's king to follow. Put a signpost on the road that comes out of Babylon where the road forks into two. One road going to Ammon and its capital, Rabbah, and the other to Judah and fortified Jerusalem. The king of Babylon now stands at the fork, uncertain whether to attack Jerusalem or Rabbah. He calls his magicians to look for omens. They cast lots by shaking arrows from the quiver. They inspect the livers of animal sacrifices. The omen in his right hand says, Jerusalem. With battering rams, his soldiers will go against the gates, shouting for the kill. They will put up siege towers and build ramps against the walls. The people of Jerusalem will think it is a false omen because of their treaty with the Babylonians. But the king of Babylon will remind the people of their rebellion. Then he will attack and capture them. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Again and again, you remind me of your sin and your guilt. You don't even try to hide it. In everything you do, your sins are obvious for all to see. So now the time of your punishment has come. So this is just like if you have children and they're not listening and they're not following direction and they are literally just showing you all the wrong things that they're doing. What good parent would allow that to go on? What good parent wouldn't guide and direct their child in the way they should go? The people of God, the Israelites, are completely against everything that God has taught them and put in their hearts. And so God is going to have to punish them, going to have to discipline them because he loves them, because he wants to redirect them. And it's the same with our kids, and it's the same with us today. O oh, you corrupt and wicked prince of Israel, your final day of reckoning is here. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Take off your jeweled crown for the old order changes. Now the lowly will be exalted and the mighty will be brought down. Destruction, destruction. I will surely destroy the kingdom and it will not be restored until the one appears who has the right to judge it. Then I will hand it over to him. And now, son of man, prophesy concerning the Ammonites and their mockery. Give them this message from the sovereign Lord. A sword, a sword is drawn for your slaughter. It is polished to destroy, flashing like lightning. Your prophets have given false visions and your fortune tellers have told lies. The sword will fall on the necks of the wicked for whom the day of final reckoning has come. Now return the sword to its sheath. For in your own country, the land of your birth, I will pass judgment upon you. I will pour out my fury on you and blow on you with the fire of my anger. I will hand you over to cruel men who are skilled in destruction. You will be fuel for the fire, and your blood will be spilled in your own land. You will be utterly wiped out, your memory lost to history. For I, the Lord, have spoken. Now we're in chapter 22. And this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, are you ready to judge Jerusalem? Are you ready to judge this city of murderers? Publicly denounce her detestable sins and give her this message from the Sovereign Lord. O city of murderers, doomed and damned, 
city of idols, filthy and foul. You are guilty because of the blood you have shed. You are defiled because of the idols you have made. Your day of destruction has come. You have reached the end of your years. I will make you an object of mockery throughout the world. Good morning, Randy. We're in Ezekiel 22. Oh, infamous city, filled with confusion. In the New Living you will be Translation. Mocked by people far and near. Every leader in Israel who lives within your walls is bent on murder. Fathers and mothers are treated with contempt. Foreigners are forced to pay for protection. Orphans and widows are wronged and oppressed among you. You despise my holy things and violate my Sabbath days of rest. People accuse others falsely and send them to their death. You are filled with idol worshippers and people who do obscene things. Men sleep with their father's wives and force themselves on women who are menstruating. Within your walls live men who commit adultery with their neighbors' wives, who defile their daughters-in-law, or who rape their own sisters. There are hired murderers, loan racketeers, and extortioners everywhere. They never even think of me and my commands, says the Sovereign Lord. But now I clap my hands in indignation over your dishonest gain and bloodshed. How strong and courageous will you be in my day of reckoning? I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will do what I said. I will scatter you among the nations and purge you of your wickedness. And when I have been dishonored among the nations because of you, you will know that I am the Lord. Then this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, the people of Israel are the worthless slag that remains after silver is smelted. They are the dross that is left over, a useless mixture of copper, tin, iron, and lead. So tell them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Because you are all worthless slag, I will bring you to my crucible in Jerusalem. Just as silver, copper, iron, lead, and tin are melted down in a furnace, I will melt you down in the heat of my fury. I will gather you together and blow the fire of my anger upon you, and you will melt like silver in fierce heat, then you will know that I, the Lord, have poured out my fury on you. Again, a message came to me from the Lord, son of man, give the people of Israel this message. In the day of my indignation, you will be like a polluted land, a land without rain. Your princes plot conspiracies just as lions stalk their prey. They devour innocent people, seizing treasures and extorting wealth. They make many widows in the land. Your priests have violated my instructions and defiled my holy things. They make no distinction between what is holy and what is not. And they do not teach my people the difference between what is ceremonially clean and unclean. They disregard my Sabbath days, so that I am dishonored among them. Your leaders are like wolves who tear apart their victims. They actually destroy people's lives for money. And your prophets cover up for them by announcing false visions and making lying predictions. They say... My message is from the Sovereign Lord, when the Lord hasn't spoken a single word to them. Even common people oppress the poor, rob the needy, and deprive foreigners of justice. I looked for someone who might rebuild the wall of righteousness that guards the land. 
I searched for someone to stand in the gap in the wall so I wouldn't have to destroy the land. But I found no one. Found no one. So now, I will pour out my fury on them, consuming them with the fire of my anger. I will heap on their heads the full penalty for all their sins. I, the Sovereign Lord, have spoken. Okay, now we're going to Hebrews. Hebrews 10, 1 through 17. The old system, under the law of Moses, was only a shadow, a dim preview of the good things to come, not the good things themselves. The sacrifices under that system were repeated again and again, year after year, but they were never able to provide perfect cleansing for those who came to worship. If they could have provided perfect cleansing, the sacrifices would have stopped. For the worshippers would have been purified once for all time, and their feelings of guilt would have disappeared. But instead, those sacrifices actually reminded them of their sins year after year. For it is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. That is why, when Christ came into the world, he said to God, You did not want animal sacrifices or sin offerings, but you have given me a body to offer. You were not pleased with burnt offerings or other offerings for sin. Then I said, Look, I have come to do your will, O God as is written about me in the scriptures. First, Christ said, you did not want animal sacrifices or sin offerings or burnt offerings or other offerings for sin, nor were you pleased with them, though they are required by the law of Moses. Then he said, look, I have come to do your will. He cancels the first covenant in order to put the second into effect. For God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all time. Under the old covenant, the priest stands and ministers before the altar day after day offering the same sacrifices again and again, which can never take away sins. But our high priest offered himself to God as a single sacrifice for sins, good for all time. Then he sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. There he waits until his enemies are humbled and made a footstool under his feet. For by that one offering, he forever made perfect those who are being made holy. Those are us who ask for and the salvation Holy Spirit and forgiveness also of our testifies sins. that this is so. For he says, This is the new covenant I will make with my people on that day, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. Then, then he, he says, says I, will I will never again, again remember, remember their, their sins, sins and, and lawless, lawless deeds. deeds. We are forgiven. And then we go to Psalms. Psalm 108. A song. A psalm of David. My heart is confident in you, O God. No wonder I can sing your praises with all my heart. Wake up, lyre and harp. I will wake the dawn with my song. I will thank you, Lord, among all the people. I will sing your praises among the nations, for your unfailing love is higher than the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. 
Be exalted, be exalted O God, o God above, the highest, above heavens. the highest heavens. May your glory shine, May your glory shine over, over all, all the earth. earth. Now rescue your beloved people. Answer and save us by your power. God has promised this by his holiness. I will divide up Shechem with joy. I will measure out the valley of Succoth. Gilead is mine. And Manasseh too. Ephraim, my helmet, will produce my warriors. And Judah, my scepter, will produce my kings. But Moab, my wash basin, will become my servant. And I will wipe my feet on Edom and shout in triumph over Philistia. Who will bring me into the fortified city? Who will bring me victory over Edom? Have you rejected us, O oh God? Will you no longer march with our armies? Oh, please help us against our enemies. For all human help is useless. With God's help. With God's help, we, we will, will do, do mighty, mighty things. things. For he, For he will, will trample, trample down, down our foes. foes. And then Proverbs. Proverbs 27, 12. A prudent person foresees danger and takes precautions. The simpleton goes blindly on and suffers the consequences. Okay. So that takes us to okay, the, in the end book of, Hebrews today. of our time in the Word. I'm so grateful that you were here with us. As always, you can add questions or prayer requests. I enjoy hearing about what's going on in your guys' lives. I pray that you would just be blessed, that you would use this as a starting point to share the word with others, and to grow your own walk as well. Thank you so much, and you have a blessed day.